guys, I, I was, uh, like I always do, sneaking around gear sluts. Um, uh, I'm, I'm over there a lot checking stuff out, and I was just cruising through some general questions, and I noticed that a lot of people kept asking about, um, do I put the EQ before the compressor, do I put it after the compressor? We went over this a couple of times, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little different take on it. Um, but philosophically, I like to clean up the signal before it gets to the compressor. Um, so, for example, if I've got a lot of low end in a particular sound, I like to take that out so it doesn't control the compressor too much. Uh, if I've got various things that, that are peaking and I, I want the compressor to work a little smoother, different things. So I, anything I put before the compressor is repair work for the compressor to do a better job, give me the sound I want. Anything after I do, any EQing after the compressor, um, I tend to think of it as compensating for things that the compressor lacked. And then sometimes uh, I just like the sound of it. So as always, trust your ears, but I'm going to change that little saying. Experiment, 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 and then trust your ears. You're going to do some stuff that sounds bad, but remember it because there's a place for it somewhere in the, in the recording world. And once you get a catalog of how things um, sound in your head, then, then that uh, increases your palate that you can draw from. So some of these aren't exactly fitting the, the title, some of these examples, but heck, I just want to show them to you anyway. It's kind of cool to me. And we're, we're using the song uh, Monsters again. Uh, I love this song. Okay, uh, here's the track with no vocals, just so you can hear it. I want you to focus on the drums, the ambient drum sound. Okay, now I'm going to solo this particular ambient track. Okay, I'm, I'm put this devil lock on it, which basically this devil lock is a compressor. Uh, gosh, it must be from the 50s, maybe. Um, I got hip to it by uh, hearing that Chad Blake used it. It's, um, it was designed kind of like an AGC, an automatic gain control. It was supposed to just kind of keep a, a, a speaker in your face, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an MC or something in your face, a speaker. And um, it just distorts really nice. It was so crappy. So check this out. Okay, as you can see, we gained a lot, but we, we, we got a bunch of crap, so let's clear that crap out. I want it to be a little more ambient sounding. Okay, so let's put that in the track. Now let's see what happens if we put like like the, the low end EQ above the before the compressor. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other, but you can hear the difference in the sound, so you know, check that out. I live for this stuff. That was so cool. Okay, let me show you let me show you something similar on a hi hat track. This is a little different. I think you're going to like this. might give you some ideas. Um, DS run the hi-hat. Dave, have you lost your mind? Well, that's, an, that's another ITL. A, a DS is just a compressor where the side chain is just feeding at certain frequencies. So uh, usually they're thought of as being good for high end. The hi-hat is high end. So let's check it out. Without the deesser. Here's without the EQ. Now here's here's with the EQ. DS. Takes a little bit of that brittleness out of it. Now let's put the, let's reverse it.
I like it better. I like it better with the EQ after the compressor. Let's do the track. Just kind of brings the brings it a little bit in your face. Is that is that dramatic enough, Will? Okay. Now let me show you a kick drum. I'm taking a chance because I'm doing this just off the off the top of my head. This uh, this could sound worse. Or better, I don't know. Um, this is a, I showed you this plug in before. This is emulating the parameters on a DBX 160 XT. Let's solo this kick. This is with the stuff on it. Without. With. Okay, let's do it in the track. Now, now let's see what happens if we um, if we put the compressor after the EQ. Before. I like the low end better. I like a lot about it better. Okay, now let's try something else. Let's try a bass. This ought to this ought to be fun. Sometimes, guys, these are these these examples are a little on the subtle side, mainly because I'm I'm actually giving you stuff from a mix, and you know, mixing is not about exaggerating; it's about a lot of little tiny moves. Okay, so here's the bass. got the compressor first then the EQ now the compressor is just doing basic stuff uh, no compression on this channel strip I probably tried it and didn't like it so uh, the compressor that is just kept the EQ uh, nothing radical on the EQ just a little top end a little mid-range I guess it's in the track Now, let's see what it sounds like with the compressor before the EQ. After. Very subtle, but I like it better after. Let's, sit, let's listen to it in the mix, see what, what happens. Okay, in the mix compressor before the EQ. Not sitting quite right. It's a little muddier. I don't hear the definition of the of the, the strings. It just sounds better to me like this. It's subtle. If if um, if it's if it's something that you don't readily hear, um, don't feel bad. Some of these things are subtle. Um, but like I said, it's the combination of a lot of little subtle things. Let's see, we did the kick, we did the hat, ambience, and the bass. Damn, I think that was it. Hope you liked it.